30 years.
mean, they tell us this economy is the best that we can do. Donald Trump and I know different. So we're doing the best that we can do. It's just the best they can do. And when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, we're going to get this economy working for every working family, small business, and family farm in this nation. Principles into practice, which work every time you try. And they work in the Hoosier State. He's always telling me, he says, You got to talk about Indiana. You got to talk about Indiana. And in the Hoosier State, we kind of got modesty in our DNA. You know? <laughs> we kind of do. But I'm trying to get over that a little bit because Indiana, Indiana's a place where we demonstrated, you know, when you, when you balance budgets and, and you let people keep more of what they earn. You make the right investments in education and roads and bridges and infrastructure and in health care. You take three steps back. It all still works. We actually call Indiana a state that works. In the time that I've been governor, we've cut taxes every single year. We've cut unemployment in half. We have more than ever before. We have more than ever before. We have more than ever before. Donald Trump, about a week ago, went to Detroit. I was there at his side. I introduced him at that speech. He's a hard man to precede. <laughs> Introducing at that speech, I was proud to do it. Because he laid out a vision I would recommend to your attention to reignite the American economy with the time-honored principles of tax reform, regulatory reform, energy reform, and trade reform. When Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, we are going to cut taxes across the board for every American. <laughs> Dr. Heck and others, and we're going to lower those marginal income tax rates, and we're going to lower the corporate tax rate in America to 15% so that businesses large and small in Nevada, in Indiana, in America can compete with businesses all over the world and keep jobs here. He's got a plan to roll back red tape, something we did in the Hoosier State that he was kind enough to reference and say I became governor. We actually sign a moratorium on any, any new regulation. And Donald Trump's going to do the very same thing the day he becomes president. We're going to look back. We're going to repeal all those unconstitutional executive orders of the Obama administration and roll back regulatory red tape and cycling our American economy. We're going to develop the resources of this land. We're going to end the war on coal once and for all and develop all the resources of this nation. Like one of the best negotiators on planet Earth to be president of the United States. We're going to negotiate trade deals that will work for working Americans in all 50 states. Now, Hillary Clinton the other day said uh, she said uh, that, it, that, that Donald Trump's plan and his expectation to get the economy moving again was, quote, wildly unrealistic. <laughs> Today. Well, the only thing that's wildly unrealistic is expecting you can elect the same people with the same bad ideas and get a different result. And when Donald Trump is going to turn this economy around and get America elected. The contrast at home is dramatic. The contrast in policies and philosophy, once you look outside our borders, is a whole lot different. It's even worse. The record of Hillary Clinton on foreign affairs and Barack Obama is extraordinary. If you took a, a picture of a map of the wider Middle East in 2009 and you looked at it, a map today, you can barely recognize it because of the policies that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have advanced. Seven and a half years of, uh, of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton's leadership on the world stage is literally